I'd like to talk about magical effectiveness. First of all, if magic doesn't bring you results, then why bother? If practical magic is not bringing you practical results, then why even bother with it? It makes no sense, does it? Why anybody would want to to do something and, and really commit so much time and energy into something that's not really producing results. But I, I see that happen more than I'd like to. What I've noticed is that there's a few little principles that oftentimes get overlooked. And sometimes the reason why magic isn't effective is not for some big reason. It's oftentimes for some little reasons. So I'm going to go over a few of those little reasons that I've noticed that trip people up, that once they fix them, things start working well. I think Crowley came up with it, but I'm not sure. It's not my line. It's somebody else's line, but it's results are your proof. Results are your proof. I I had somebody else once tell me results are your guru. So if you want a guru or a teacher, results would be the the guru or the teacher. So you'll know if, if you did it right by the results you get. A lot of times people don't know if they got results because they didn't define their goal. They didn't define their goal. A lot of people are surprised that you have to have a goal when you cast a spell. <laughs> you have to have an actual objective. You don't want you don't want to do a spell for quote prosperity. You don't want to do a spell for love. You don't want to do a spell for health. You don't want to do a spell for protection. You want to have something more defined. You want to you want to find parameters that you can say ah it worked and you can check it off. You can say it worked. So you might want to do, find your perfect mate. You might want to do heal this particular ailment. You want, you might want to, uh, you know, get a job. You might want to increase your income by a certain percentage. You can, you can specify what the parameters of, of your goal are and at the same time still say this or something better. You can still have your mind open that it can work out in a way that you didn't expect, but still have a goal in mind so that you can say, ah, even though it didn't come out the way I thought I wanted it to, this has been taken care of. So I can check this off. I can say this is a success. Whereas a lot of times people have such open-ended magical goals that they don't know if it works. They can't tell. They can't really tell. They they can justify it here or justify it there, but they can't actually come and bring me any kind of proof that they did A and B and got C. And so usually that's the first little tweak that I will give people. It's just be more specific. Now, again, you don't have to be so specific and on, on this date, with this form, with this thing. You, you don't want to do that. You don't, you don't want to stuff your spell into, into such a box that, that, um, you know, that, that, you, that there's no room to breathe, that, that it can't manifest in a better way than what you thought. But you should be able to say at least, I want this specific health problem taken care of. I want this specific debt paid. I want this specific um, issue taken care of so that you can you can be very clear that it worked rather than being so open ended and so nebulous with your with your magical goals so that's one thing is to be more specific if you want to be you want to be specific in magic so that magic can be specific for you another thing that i notice people do is they do too much I get this all the time. Now, how about if I just add this? Because I'm doing I'm doing a talisman, and then I'm doing a candle burning ceremony, and then I'm doing this magical dance thing. And do you think maybe if I added a psalm to that, it would help? And maybe if I do some um, some rosary work on it also, do you think maybe that would help? And usually what I do is I say, um, let's not do that. Let's just take one spell on one goal and complete the spell and then move off of that and go on to a different goal and let the magic work. Let the magic breathe. If you keep pounding it and pounding it and pounding it and throwing the kitchen sink at it, what do you think that is telling your deep mind? 
I don't believe in any of it. I have no faith in any of this. So I'm grasping at straws and trying to throw all kinds of stuff onto this spell. That's how the, the deep mind usually perceives that. It looks like you're desperate. Well, remember the deep mind gives you more of what you bring to a spell. What you bring to a spell is what you get more of. So if you come to a spell with desperation, you will get more to be desperate about. You have to learn how to, in the spell, conjure the emotions and the visuals that train your deep mind as to what your new objective is. And you want to be careful of any subtext that's in there. So throwing everything but the kitchen sink at your goal, it, the subtext is, I don't believe it. I don't believe that this is going to work. Okay, so, so if you want to get results, you want to do less. You want to simplify your spell casting. Less is more. Complicated isn't better. Your deep mind doesn't necessarily like complicated. But so you want to be, uh, you can listen to my lecture on, on respecting your symbols. You want to be, be clear with your symbols. You want to have a well-constructed spell, but you don't want to have an overindulgent spell. You don't, want, you don't want to do too many things at once. So that's another thing is be careful of that. Okay. Another way that you can, that you can uh, amp up the effectiveness of your spell is is by keeping notes, keeping a magical diary. So you want to you want to write down the the date that you cast that you started the spell, what the planet you know the planetary hour, the phase of the moon, the day of the week, what you used, how you did it, you know what the what the method was. And then if, uh, if it's a multiple day spell, you want to add that stuff to just uh, start to make notes of any kind of emotional response that you might have had or anything unusual that, that, that happened as a result of it. And then, and then when it, when it uh, does come true, you can go back and, 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 and make a note of that. Now, if it doesn't, or if you get odd results, then you can, then you have notes that you can go back through and you say, oh, I see. The reason why my money spell, you know, went wonky is because I did this or I did that. Um, or, or at least if you don't know why, if you have notes, then when you go to somebody who's maybe got more experience than you and asking questions, if you have notes, then you can say, this is what I did. And then they can look and they, they'll say, oh, I wouldn't have done that. Maybe try it again and do it this way or something like that. But if you don't take any notes, then it's not really there. You don't you can't really call it magic. If you're making notes and you're and you're keeping a really clear uh record of what you're doing, then it's it's got a science about it because you can come back and you can and you can say yes. You can say yes, I did it. Now, for a lot of people that they seem to have like one area of their life. I used to know this lady that um, she always needed, uh, she was always needing a money spell. She always needed a money spell and it was usually around tax time. <laughs> and so she had this recurring problem. And this is another, this is another area of, um, uh, of magical effectiveness that I've noticed is a problem is that, that people get addicted to solving the same problem again and again and again, and they never actually solve it. They, they just sort of get addicted to the process of casting a spell. And so they're always looking for a new spell for this and a new spell for this and a new spell for this, trying to find another thing and another thing and another thing. And what they need is probably to do some deeper work into what's going on rather than just casting a spell for a specific circumstance. They need to cast a spell in a way that's going underneath and doing some deep work. And we go through a lot of that in our uh, Witchcraft Beyond the Basics course, a lot of that getting underneath, especially from these problem areas of our lives where, where, we, where we don't seem to get long-lasting results. So, you, you, so sometimes you need to actually go deeper with your magic and do some rituals that are under the surface of what appears to be the problem and, and, and 
targeting where those negative manifestations really are coming from. Because a lot of times it looks like, say, um, a money problem, but the money problem is just the manifestation. It's just the symptom of something else, maybe something that needs to be forgiven or something that needs to be released or something like that. And so that's oftentimes when, when when you have the same kind of problem again and again and again, and your magic doesn't seem to do much other than maybe give you some temporary relief, um, then it's time to to approach it from a different point of view um, and maybe do like some dark magic or some kind of shadow work or something like that with it. Uh, let's see. Then the, some of the other uh, issues that I've noticed that, that people have, the reason why they're, they're not effective with their magic is... Um, and we've talked about this before, and I have a whole lecture on it, but it's, it's the attitude. It's the attitude that they have outside of the spell. It's the attitude outside of the spell. They're not willing to give up their bad attitude. They're not willing to give up their negative attitude about their life or about something. They, they, they don't want to give up the cynicism. See, because cynicism and magic don't go well together. They just don't. You have to be able to look at your life like a little kid. You have to look at it like with fresh eyes, and and that gives that that gives a a space for for the magic to manifest. Think of it like there's this screen of space that's called the physical world, and we are projecting experiences on this screen of space, and we do that by rote. Now, when we are doing a spell, what we are attempting to do is to is to consciously cast an image on the screen of space so that we can have an experience or an object or whatever we're wanting. We're having a, an experience that we choose, that we desire, rather than just having it chosen by rote from our deep mind, just habitual thinking or by the group mind. So you're going against the grain of a lot of deep-seated habits, not only within your own mind, but also within the group mind. So it's kind of a heroic effort. You know, it's kind of a heroic effort. Uh, finally, the the one other thing, and we've talked about this many times before. The uh, uh, one of the things that tends to go against results is this idea of dabbling, and and I say it as if it's some sort of sin. I don't mean it to come out that way. It's it's fine to go read a bunch of stuff. It's fine to go find out what everybody's doing. It's it's there's nothing wrong with just getting information, absolutely. But that doesn't mean you have to put it all into practice. That doesn't mean that you, especially unquestioningly, there's a lot of nonsense out there. There's a lot of good stuff and there's a lot of bad stuff. There's just a lot of stuff. And if you believe every little thing you read on the internet or you hear at a lecture or something like that without putting it through any kind of test, you're at the whim of whatever. And so you don't really have a system that you're following. You don't really have a practice. You don't really you, you don't really have anything built yet. You don't have any, as I say, magical infrastructure to rely on to make sure that you're getting results on a regular basis. So so instead of going and 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 trying this and trying that and trying this and trying that, I recommend that you find one little system to start with. Something that, that, that makes maybe some sense to you or that appeals to you. I mean, that, and that's true even within Ariel's Corner. There's a, so many different systems and, and classes and courses. To try to do them all at once would be absolute insanity. Just find something that, you, that interests you, some kind of technique that sounds interesting, that piques your interest, and commit to it for, for a period of time and try to master it. And then maybe try something else. And then try something else. You don't have to commit to it for the rest of your life, but commit to it so that you can see, you can prove to yourself whether this is a good technique. If you're not getting results after a few weeks, drop it and find another technique that, that, that sounds good to you. And, and eventually you'll find things that really work well for you so that you can, you can establish that faith based on results. Now, one last thing is you also want to make sure, and there's so much talked about in, in, in my different lectures on this, so I won't belabor the point, but, but always take your sphere of influence into account. If you're, somebody said, how long is this spell going to take? 
And I, yeah, I always say, I don't know, because I don't know where your sphere of influence is. I don't know what your magical experience is. If, if, if you're trying for a goal that's really far out of your sphere of influence, it may never work. I don't know. So if, if you're trying to go for something that, that your deep mind thinks is impossible, then you're spinning your wheels. So find your sphere of influence and go just beyond what you think is possible, but not so far that it creates a lot of tension. Because tension is a killer in magic. Tension is not what you want. When you're, when you're working magic, you want everything to be relaxed. You want that mental shield to be down. And so working within your sphere of influence, even if it's on the edges of your sphere of influence, which is a smart idea. I mean, you don't need to cast spells for stuff that you can do. You don't need to cast a spell to go brush your teeth, right? You want to do, you want to cast spells for things that are just a little bit of a stretch for you, because then you start to widen that sphere of influence over time. And so, if you're always just on the precipice of what you think is possible, then you're pushing that envelope in a way that's that's very effective, and it doesn't cause tension, and that's always giving you more and more and more success that you can that you can rely on uh, in, in regards to your faith. So each success builds stronger faith, stronger faith, stronger faith, which in in turn builds your power, and then you become more powerful, and then you become more effective, and it just perpetuates itself. So you just got to take things one little step at a time, pare it down, don't do too many things at once, don't get lost in it all, and if you get in trouble, find somebody that that does know what they're doing, that does have a track record in making things work, and ask for some help. Just ask for some help. And that's what we're here for. So thank you so much for joining me today. I hope this was interesting to you. I can't wait to work with you again. Until next time, blessed be. Blessed be.